Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore how iClone lights uh, look when they are imported into Indigo and uh, the, the different lighting situations we create, how they appear when they're rendered with the Indigo plugin uh, in Indigo. So first of all we have this uh, typical scene here, we just have a little ducky and a metal uh, you know, hollow cube there and this 3D block that actually comes embedded with iClone uh, that contains a substance material here and I just have this all on a plain, uh, you know, uh, floor here. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to this scene. And I have a your typical key light and rim light that come with your default scenes. Now one thing to pay attention to is uh, if you haven't watched the material or the tutorial on shaders yet, um, we have uh, over in the indigo settings if I select each individual item, you can see right here we have this, uh, um, this little ducky here assigned as a uh, fong plastic shader. Uh, we have this one assigned as a metallic uh, fong. And this one here is uh, the diffuse, your typical diffuse shader. So these have all been assigned uh, shaders in Indigo just to kind of demonstrate how the iClone lights will affect, you know, different types of material uh, in Indigo more clearly. So let's go ahead and go to the modify panel here. And uh, what I want to do is take a look at my uh, key light here. So my key light is actually just a directional light, uh, as is my rim light. If I select that, you can see I can hit my forward slash key and uh, rotate it around here. Uh, and there's only a couple of options here, like the multiplier and the, and the color of your uh, of your light. So let's take a look at how this scene will render uh, right off the bat here. Let's just go and render it right away in Indigo. So you can see we get that uh, this nice um, metallic uh, gleam off off this uh, hollow cube here, and the nice uh, you know more subtle uh, gleam off of the uh, plastic ducky here. You can see the reflection more off the springs on the bottom there, and uh, our nice looking uh, you know texture on the uh, on the, I don't know, whatever that is, uh, the four-way the four way, the four way tube. Um, so basically, this is how your uh, diffuse lights are going to, uh, rather not your diffuse lights, your directional lights are going to render in iClone. And you can change the direction and everything like that. Fairly straightforward. The, the directional lights, the advantage that, that they have is they're never going to show up in your Indigo render. However, if I decide to, uh, you know, remove these directional lights and I create uh, myself a uh, spotlight, for example, Let's take a look at uh, how this one will render. Let's move it a little bit back here, maybe uh, behind the uh, the duck's head here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Maybe something like that. It looks kind of creepy, actually. Let's go ahead and render that and uh, see what happens. Maybe a little bit forward, we need to bring it. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and render this one. Now, what you'll see in your scene is uh, the lighting looks pretty good, but you can actually see the actual spotlight itself in the top left corner there if you pay attention. Uh, so basically what Indigo will do is it'll render anything in your scene. It'll actually even render the physical light. So keep that in mind when you're using spotlights. Generally it's advisable to uh, keep your spotlights out of your uh, viewable area, but you can certainly still use them and actually they are really recommended to use because they are, are fairly cheap on rendering time and uh, a lot cheaper than uh, point lights, uh, which is what I'll show you in just a moment. Let's go ahead and uh, keep this one rendering, and let's go over to uh, iClone one more time. Now the spotlights, there's a couple of things you can change. Uh, you know, the multiplier value, which is the intensity of the light. Uh, we can increase the range as well. Uh, the angle, let's try the angle first and increase this angle to uh, almost 180 degrees here. And the fall off, you can notice the fall off is uh, right here. Uh, let's keep that fall off pretty low as well there. And let's see how this uh, renders differently from the previous uh, one we just rendered. So you can see now we get kind of a, a, a wider range of, of lighting here. If I go back to my other Indigo uh, render, whoops, this one here is the uh, wider range, and this one here is slightly smaller. Uh, it's kind of difficult to notice, this one here uh, and this one here. Just notice this one here has a bit more light uh, around the background there. It has the same intensity of light on the uh, duck's head there, but if you kind of look over here, we have a little bit of lighting over here that previously wasn't there in the other render, so it's very dark over in this area. And that's what happens when you increase the uh, range uh, in your render. So I'm just going to stop that one right now, just to kind of save our uh, render resources. And let's go back to iClone. And let's try and increase that uh, that intensity, uh, rather the, the entire range. So you can see the range, how it affects your iClone scene. If we increase that range, um, we can actually probably just see the same thing over here. And let's decrease that fall off so we get a bit more brightness. This will probably be our brightest render. So let's go ahead and uh, render that. 
And you can see here, uh, indeed, we do have a, a very bright uh, render. The brightness on the duck's head is even even stronger. When we increase the range, it's also increasing the close uh, the intensity of objects that are close to the light as well. So let's take a look at the difference between this render and the other indigo render. So notice that the duck is uh, barely even visible. The features of the duck are barely even visible in this render because that intensity is is so high. And also a higher range will take a, a longer render time as well because the light is um, you know, stretching a lot further. It's going a lot further and uh, there's more work for the render engine to do. I like this uh, subtle render right here. Let's just go ahead and stop this one right now just to kind of show you um, the results there. Uh, let's go back to iClone and maybe keep this uh, range fairly small and let's uh, change the color to something uh, a little bit different. Maybe try a, a little bit of a blue color and increase that multiplier to about uh, two. So in iClone we get this kind of interesting looking uh, scene. So let's see how this renders in uh, Indigo with the increased multiplier and the decreased range. We get a very uh, you know uh, intimate scene here with a very um, smaller uh, small blue light. Uh, although it's a little bit intense around here, we get the nice reflection you know on the uh, other objects as well. But the range is not stretching too far. It's really focused on the area where this uh, this ducky toy is right here, and we can barely see any lighting. Uh, you know, beyond our uh, area right here. Let's go ahead and just uh, uh, stop that one right there. And so that's your uh, that's your spotlights, how they uh, react and how they perform in Indigo. Let's go ahead and uh, just delete this spotlight for now. And let's take a look at the uh, point light. So let's go ahead and create our uh, point light here. One more time. So let's create this point light. And the point light has a couple of things. Uh, the range and the actual size of the light in indigo, which I will show you in just a moment. Let's first of all uh, zoom out of our scene here a little bit. Let's just maybe go a little bit further up, uh, maybe to about this angle right here. We're going to explore how different uh, ranges affect your lights. So I'm going to create this light right here, put this one over on the left right here, and I'm going to create another light another point light and we're going to just bring this one down and over here and we need to make sure it's about the relatively same height as the other one so bring it to there let's create one more light here as well point light and let's bring that down to relatively the same height let's call this point light I'm just going to double click here I'm going to call this one red the middle point light I'm going to call uh, green and the left one I'm going to call blue because we're going to uh, be changing the colors of these point lights momentarily. Let's just zoom out here and get these uh, point lights relatively aligned. You don't have to worry too much about this distance right here. Let's go ahead and select all the point lights. What we can actually do is use this tool up here, this align object tool. We can align them on the uh, x-axis, the uh, y-axis, not the y-axis, the z-axis, and they should be uh, good to go right there. And uh, maybe we can also do uniform spacing along the y-axis. There we go. I think that's good to go. So now we have them all, uh, you know, equal uh, spaces away from each other, equal distances away from each other. So let's move these a little bit uh, closer to our scene here. And let's take a look, first of all, at uh, the range. So the blue one Let's have that one with a 500 range. We have the regular decay on. The green one, let's change the range to something like uh, 2000, uh, close enough. And the red one will change it to something like uh, 3500. And then we want to change the colors, of course. Change this one to a, a reddish color. Change this green one here to a greenish color. And change our blue one to a nice uh, bluish color right there. All right, so you can see our iClone scene is kind of confused. It doesn't really know which light to put where. Let's take a look at how these render, uh, how this scene renders now uh, once we are in uh, Indigo. Let's go ahead and render that. So you can see the lights themselves look the same, and you can see that the uh, the green area is uh, over here and fairly small, but the uh, or rather the uh, blue area is fairly small. The green one is actually overpowering. Uh, you know, most of the uh, the lighting area here. 
You can see even the green stretches out to here. And the red one is totally taking up the green. So you can see the red is kind of cutting into the greens area, whereas the green is kind of cutting into the uh, blues area, almost completely eliminating the, uh, the blues area there. Um, oops, I forgot to uh, accidentally press Alt when I was panning over there. So uh, that's kind of an interesting thing to notice, how the range really affects um, how, how the lights interact. Like the red one will take over, like I mentioned, half of the greens area, and the green, you don't even really see the blues area right there. Let's go ahead and uh, go back into iClone. And let's take a look at how we can modify these lights even further. First of all, let's set them all back to uh, values of uh, 500. And red, there we go, we'll just set back, that back to 500. And so you can see now it creates a nice kind of rainbow uh, lighting situation there in iClone. And let's see how that one renders here in uh, Indigo. Now you can see a lot more of a, a uniform uh, separation between the three lights. We get all kinds of interesting colors going on. And uh, let's take a look at that be between uh, the comparison between this one and the other one. Uh, this one right here. This one, obviously, we don't want to do much of this one. It's kind of just uh, to show you an example of how the range uh, can overpower uh, other lights, can cause one light to overpower the other. This one's a bit nicer. This one's a very interesting looking lighting situation. And uh, this one, we can close this one down, or stop this one rather, because that's been rendering for a while. And uh, there you go. So we get a nice um, red area, a green area, and a blue area. They're all fairly uh, uniformly split. Let's go back into iClone here. Now let's try one thing uh, in the indigo settings. So in the indigo settings, we have the option here, if you take a look at our three lights, we have the option to change the actual size of the lights. So let's go ahead and uh, first of all, what I want to do is take these lights, I'm control clicking them, I'm going to move them all a little bit further back so we can see like in a, in a more open area what exactly is going on and we'll bring them back to our uh, objects later so we can see the lighting results on the objects themselves. Uh, let's just bring them over to this area for now though. And what I want to do is make sure we have my, uh, let's select my blue light here. Let's keep that blue light's size at 50. Let's take this green light now and let's change the green light's value to uh, 100. Uh, rather, let's go to 75. And then the red light here, we'll change that one to 100. And let's see what happens when we change the sizes of the iClone lights in uh, Indigo. Let's go ahead and render this and take a look. So you'll notice that the physical size of the actual light itself gets larger. But pay attention closely to the, uh, the interaction of the lights themselves. We can see that uh, we get some basic, uh, the red sort of overpowers the green and the green sort of overpowers the blue. Although the blending right now is a little bit better than it was in our previous example when we really raised those values in iClone. You can notice a little bit more red in this area if you pay close attention and a slight bit more green in this area because the green and the blue kind of blend very well together. Um, so basically when you have uh, different sizes of lights in Indigo, the physical size of the point light will be larger as well as the area that it affects. So it's very similar to the range of point lights in iClone. Let's go back to uh, iClone here, and let's bring those three lights back to the position that we wanted them to be in in the first place. Illuminating our three objects right here. And let's give that, uh, first of all, we can probably cut down one of these renders here. I think we just stopped that one here. And this one, that's the uh, one that we're just working on. We'll go ahead and stop that. You don't want too many renders to be going at the same time here normally because uh, it'll uh, take up your system resources. I really like this one, especially the uh, reflection on the metallic uh, material right there. Let's just close it down now and uh, take a look at what the uh, this sample here will uh, bring out for us. So remember, we have the red light, uh, the red point light being the largest, the green light, um, being the medium-sized one, and the blue one uh, being the smallest. So let's go to a distance like about here, and let's try and render that. You can see that we do have a lot of, uh, of red light, uh, especially on this area. Um, even the red light is affecting this area over here on our hollow cube, and especially this, this side of the, uh, the hollow cube, the metallic hollow cube, you can see a lot of red reflecting off there. Whereas this side, is uh, there's a lot of blue going on. And the red is even stretching out to as far as this uh, 
this duck's face, if you can notice that. So again, the range and the size of your iClone lights in Indigo really affect uh, how far their reach is, uh, how far they affect, I guess. So let's go back to uh, iClone now. So that's a useful thing to keep in mind as well. If you, uh, you know, if you're trying to fit a light, oops, let's just select one of the lights now. If you're trying to fit a light inside of a lamp or something like that, maybe we'll try and fit this one single light inside of our cube. And uh, there we go. Let's have it a nice, uh, nice green illumination on the inside of the cube there. And if I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, fit this inside my cube, say I take my green light here, and uh, this one's at uh, 100. And let's maybe shrink this cube down a little bit, yeah, something like like that, for example. And I take my green light. This one I selected over here. I just bring that down a tiny bit. So right now the green light, the size is at 100. And let's take a look what happens when I render this. That green light will be fairly, fairly large, uh, and it'll you know kind of really light up the inside of the uh, of the cube there. Now let's try and make that cube even a little bit smaller and see what happens. If we make it like small, something like this, for example, and let's take the green light and bring it down a little bit more. And maybe we just want to get more into the center there. There we go. Let's try and ha see what happens when we render this way. We can actually even zoom in right now and uh, under that. So you can see the light pretty much takes up the entire interior of the cube. So if you're rendering something like a lamp, for example, and you, you find the light is uh, just you know sticking through your lampshade, if the actual physical point light itself is too large, you can decrease the uh, size in indigo. But keep in mind that may decrease the range as well, which normally won't really matter as long as you're uh, as long as you're using a lamp because we we don't need a long range for a lamp anyways. So that's another another option for you there to uh, you know change the uh, size of your point lights. And of course, keep in mind that whenever you uh, deactivate your lights in iClone, those lights will also disappear uh, from your iClone light section in your Indigo plugin as well. So if we only have this uh, you know green light, for example, and and maybe the blue lights take out that red light, we can see a really kind of cool uh, cool cold cold lighting scheme uh, in this render here. That's one way to uh, you know deactivate. You can deactivate from your uh, from your uh, Indigo plugin, and you can also deactivate as well uh, from your uh, Scene Manager or your Indigo plugin. So let's go ahead and uh, we can take out this blue light. Let's bring back this red light and take out the green light and change that red light. Let's maybe take that red light and increase the intensity something like uh, four. It's a fairly high intensity, so let's check out the result of this one here. There we go, we got a fairly, fairly uh, strong red light coming from off the screen. I don't know if you can even see it on the screen anymore. Uh, nope, but there you go. All right, so because I've deactivated that point light, you can no longer see it in the scene. Uh, we've made it, we've deactivated it in iClone, and it's no longer active, and uh, any other light that has been deactivated will not show up. So only when the light is active, the spotlight, or rather the point light is active, will it show up in your scene. So let's take one final look at uh, all of our renders here. So this is the uh, one with the nice red lighting here. And we got that, uh, I like this one. This one kind of creates a nice, uh, this is a seven minute render right here. So it's a fairly nice uh, result for uh, for seven minutes, even though we do have those point lights in here. Um, this one's our original one. This is the green one, which we never really finished. We can just close that one down. and. Uh, Here's the uh, first one here with that very subtle lighting, and this is an eight-minute render as well. So thank you for watching, guys. That was just a brief overview of uh, how your icon lights perform in Indigo Renderer, and uh, thanks for watching.